All right, so at this point, I've got the, the site that we were working on last time. And what we did previously was we talked about a few uh, plugins that were useful, and we were about to start to talk about the e-commerce plugin. Uh, WordPress does not have e-commerce features plugged in or built in, right? So we have to use the plugins to do that. Now, what we're going to do one thing before that is, let's have a little bit of a lecture on a concept that's going to be more important once we actually add the e-commerce, which is updates. We've been looking at this for a few times while we've had our site that there's some update. Let's have a little discussion on updates. I had said previously, updates are good and you want to do them with a little asterisk. So let's talk about the asterisk today, the, the, the footnote. So I'm going to make myself some notes here, and we'll talk about updates. So regarding updates, WordPress gets updates. Updates fix issues security issues. Updates give you more features. So short answer, you need updates. You need to update the site. This has been nagging us a little bit every time we log into the site. There is an update. So if I'm saying we should do updates, short answer, we should do the update. But let's talk about the long answer because it's not as easy as simply clicking update. Because on your own computer, let's say, I'm working on my Windows computer at home and a little pop-up says, there's an update, please restart to continue. I don't want to restart at that moment, I'm busy. So I say, remind me later. And then I get to it later, hopefully. On your phone, your Android phone, your, your iPhone phone, it's going to tell you once in a while too, you've got updates waiting for you. So at a certain point, you can say, remind me later, remind me later, and then eventually you have to do it. So for security purposes, like I'm saying, that's the big idea. You get features, you get extra things when you do updates. You know, if you've used an iPhone for a while, you remember the big change from iOS 6 to iOS 7 and how suddenly it changed so much and everyone hated it. And now no one remembers that change. Same thing on Windows. I was using Windows 7, and then I got Windows 8, and I hated it, and now I'm on Windows 10, and it's nothing. So, you know, updates happen, they give you new features, but they're updating security issues. Short answer. I mean, long answer. Uh, do updates intelligently. I'm probably missing an L in there, but let's go look at the update screen. Uh, wherever you're at here in the dashboard, click on updates. You can also click on the little spinning arrow at the top. That tells me we've got an update. I have one at least. You might see more as time goes on. Let's see what's happening in the updates screen. This screen has three big sections. There's a section on the WordPress core software. There's a section on plugins and there's a section on themes. So updating plugins intelligently in this order. WordPress core, WordPress themes, and WordPress plugins. So it's a little bit out of order than what's in that screen. The screen shows you core, plugins, themes. I'm saying Pay attention to doing updates in this order, WordPress core and theme and plugins. So WordPress core is the basic software, basic software of WordPress. It, it's obviously gone from version 1 to version 2 to 3 to 3.5 to 3.9, 4. Point whatever. We are currently on 4.75. So this is the first thing to think about updating, the main software. It's the foundation of everything. So keep up to date with the basic software of WordPress. 4.75 is the latest version.
Sometimes we get hired by clients, we log into their site, and they're using WordPress 3.8 or some other 3. Point whatever version. The problem there, of course, is that it's an older version of WordPress that hackers may have figured out the exploits and the site is insecure. So one of the first things we do for a client is make sure that we can upgrade the site to the latest version of the software to be most secure. Keeps you secure, yes. So, say you got this site that had a previous WordPress uh, version, you know, security issue. Mm -hmm. So, when you when you go into site and, and we use that's why you use the local host to use the latest version. Mm -hmm. How do you know you're going to pick up junk from the old? It is a, a bigger issue to figure out what what the security issues are. Okay. You know, if the site has been hacked or the site has, you know, malware or whatever, it is harder to deal with. So that's not a really simple answer I can give. Okay. But part of the reason we use localhost is to be able to figure that out and test it and fix it in a safe environment, not on the real internet, where people can, you know, further further fall into the traps of, of the site being hacked. So if you're just a graphic artist and don't have basic, uh, you know, you don't have basic stuff that's the worst case scenario yes if the site really is badly infected and broken and such it's better to start over with the latest version and then pick and choose what you need from the old version into the new version which is a lot of work but then you've got a brand new starting point that hopefully protects you more in the future and because you know the things that are happening in Person say, hey, it happened. You're just kind of better. Mm -hmm. and you end up being a network person at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, and if exactly, it's it's more expensive to do that sort of server stuff. So based on how you've got your agreement with the client, that that's how that's going to get answered. Basically, what did they pay for? Sorry, <laughs> I was okay. thinking about this. Said that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we want to do the update of the basic WordPress first. It's your foundation. Next, we would want to do the WordPress theme updates. Obviously, this is the theme, the design of your site. Themes also get updates once in a while, or they should. The uh, creator of the theme should publish out some updates once in a while to make sure their code is secure and if there's issues to get them fixed. Your site suffers if their software is not updated. And so that happens. That's, that's pretty common too. Another failure point for clients is they keep up to date with WordPress core. They have it completely new. But then their theme is a, is a theme from two years ago or five years ago. And the problem there, of course, is that's a lot of time for someone to figure out how you know, how, how broken it is. That solution to fix. If the authors have stopped supporting their theme, then you should too pick another theme. Don't keep using an old, outdated theme that causes you to be in, to be vulnerable. So the design of your site. If the if the theme is very old, use another theme. activate another theme. Uh, it's obviously going to look differently, most likely behave differently from the old site, but it will be more secure. If they have not been up doing any more updates, most likely it's also an older theme that is not mobile friendly, that is not responsive. If you don't know that term, that means a website that responds to the size of your screen. If a person visits my site on their mobile device, the the site will shrink, will respond and, and change to look good on a mobile, or it will respond and change to look good on a big monitor. So older themes are not built in mobile friendly. So if you have an old theme that's insecure, it's probably also not mobile friendly, and more and more and more traffic is on mobile devices. It's definitely the majority now of traffic. It's definitely over 50%. Some estimates say even up to 80% of web traffic is on mobile now.
not people sitting at a laptop or on a tablet. It's on mobile, so your site should be mobile, and that's based on the theme. is it's called mobile friendly it's also called responsive responsive design it used to be a big selling point a few years ago when you would browse the theme directory and they would proudly proclaim mobile friendly and now it's like you're not mobile friendly nowadays you have to be mobile friendly by, by default that is regard that also regards SEO. Non mobile friendliness is bad for SEO. So if your site is not mobile friendly, it could be hurting your rankings. Yes. How can find the friendly mobile friendly? It'll tell you when you when you look at the when you look at the theme. When you view the details of the theme, it, it should tell you. But because it's so common that that it is mobile friendly, they don't. They sometimes they don't even they don't tell you. But it should tell you somewhere in the in the details of the theme. And, uh, when we have a website, is it necessary every time we update everything? Well, that's part of the lecture I'm going to talk about right now. When we have a theme on our website, the team, we should again update it. Well, that question, yes, that's what I'm talking about here. You should do your updates, yeah. So if there are updates to your theme, you should you should do them. So the next point to consider is the uh, the plugins, so the extra features. So update your plugins. As I said, uh, when we were looking at plugins, uh, try to use plugins that have been updated less than less than three months. Use plugins with updates of less than three months. If the plugin is four months without an update, then it's close enough. I could probably do it. I'll be fine. Uh, or use it, that is, if it's nine months since an update, if it's 12 months, two years, I might not want to use that. That's a pretty old plugin in internet time. People are trying to hack these things all day long. There's a room full of people being hired by various entities just trying to, to hack WordPress things all day long. That's their job, to hack someone's site. And so if you've got an old, outdated theme, an old, outdated plugin, an old, outdated WordPress core, you're a big target. That's why you want to do these updates. So knowing what you update, you still we still have to know how to update. In that order, yes, but here's more of a detailed how to update. So step one. Now I'll say step zero. Make a backup of your site. How do you do that? The duplicator plugin. So this duplicator plugin that we've been using to resurrect the site, it's making a backup of your site. We're using it obviously to bring the site back to life every, every time we meet here. But it can be used as well to make a perfect copy of your site before big changes. I believe I mentioned that last time. So before we make these updates, it's a good idea to make a backup of the whole site. Then, update WordPress core. Test the site. Afterward. After you uh, b update the basic WordPress software, it's a good idea to test the site, meaning browse your links a little bit, check if your e-commerce plugin still works, or your uh, contact form, because at that point two th you have two possibilities. You have site works fine, go to step three, or site is broken, restore from step zero, and 
and then troubleshoot. So we have all of these things that could be updated. And if I just go through all of the steps to update and then I check my site and something's broken, where was the failure point? Updating a plugin? Which plugin? Updating a theme? Updating the main WordPress core? I wasted a lot of time doing all my updates. The site is broken. I never tested it. I have to start all over. I have to restore the site and start to do updates again. This how-to that I'm talking about is a lot of steps of a lot of effort and a lot of time, but again, it's necessary to have your site updated. So let's say no problem happened. I go to step three. Back up the site. If at that point the site works, make a backup just in case. It doesn't take a long time comparatively to do a backup, so you might as well do a backup. Next step, update themes. And how many themes should we usually have? Two. Three is okay, but I would recommend two. One, your main theme that is active and running, and two, a basic theme like 2017 just in case. Just in case your, your, your main theme breaks, has been hacked, or has a problem, you can always switch over to the basic 2017 theme and try to try to fix things. So you really only need two themes. So I do the updates for the themes. Some of these are going to sort of then be optional in that test the site again. Again, you have the problem or the issue of did it work or did it not? If it did work, then go to the next step six. If it didn't work, restore back from your last backup. In this case, step three. So I updated the core, I updated the theme, something failed. Okay, well, I go back to step three, restore my backup from after the time I did the first backup, the first update. Figure out what's wrong with that theme. Maybe I have to contact the author. Maybe there was some button that I shouldn't have pressed. Most likely it's going to be that the theme has a problem and you have to contact the author. You can contact the author theme of course authors the theme's author, of course, when you look at the details. There's who created this theme? CSS Igniter. That usually goes to their site and then you can contact them. There's going to be the free tech support and then the paid tech support. Guess which one works better? <laughs> paid tech support. So same thing with plugins when we talk about plugins. So if updating your theme broke your site, you have to restore and do troubleshooting. Okay, no problems. Step six, backup. If you've updated the main core, you've updated your themes, your site is working, save that. Save that backup because then the next step update plugins. And in this case, you probably have a bunch of plugins. There's no minimum or maximum. What I said about plugins is only keep the plugins you're using. Don't have seven plugins deactivated because they're taking up resources. They're bugging you for updates. Why am I going to update them and use up my bandwidth and use up my server space if I'm not, if I don't have them active? So in here, I would say Um, start with the most important plugin first. Update the most important plugin, such as our e-commerce plugin, which is going to keep track of our product inventory, prices and sales and all of that. I want to update that one to make sure the site works to go to the next ones, because it's happened to me at least once, and to me once is enough. Because for me it annoys me, and it also costs time and money, meaning that it's happened at least once that I'm going through this sequence for a client, and then we're starting to do the updates for the plugins. And the easy way to do plugin updates is simply select them all and update them all. And they're all going to update in order alphabetically, and it's happened to me at least once that at some point Duplicator crashes, nothing else gets updated, and the site is stuck in maintenance mode. Because when you do any of these updates, 
core theme or plugin, your site goes into maintenance mode and no one can visit it because there's stuff happening in the background that your, your customer shouldn't look at. So it's happened to me that I just say, update them all, and it crashes at some point, and the site is stuck in maintenance mode, and that's you need to do special things to un, unset that. So I start with the most important plugin first, test the site lightly, and then next most important, etc., etc. Start with the most important plugins, test that that works, next plugin, next plugin. You've done all your plugins. And this has the same thing here. Your site works fine. Go to the next step, eight. If there were some failure somewhere, go back to your previous backup, six, eight. Test site, backup. done. It is a lot of work, a lot of things that could go wrong. It's very tempting to just click the button, automate all the backups. Something's going to fail somewhere, perhaps, and you're going to have to figure out what went wrong. So that's why I said previously, updates are good, you want to do them, but there's the footnote. Any, does that make sense? Any questions on this update concept? Yes. Once we start to do any updates, we go into maintenance mode. So that means no one should be, yeah, no one should be able to create a new account with new data. So we should not. Yeah, you should. You should have the. You should have the backup before anything, just in case, and you should be safe. So my next question to that is, if you're utilizing a plugin for members, because I saw that there's like a certain code, like a plugin that you can profile Yeah. Well, actually, the good thing is that it doesn't create a separate database. It uses the same database. A way a database can work is you have like one, here's a database. Here's a database. And I've got all of this data on this sheet. And I've got all of this data on this sheet, but it's all the same database. So that's what's happening in WordPress. There's a sheet that is holding a list of all your products. And there's a sheet that is holding a list of all your clients and profiles. And it's all part of the same database. So when Duplicator makes the backup, it's making a backup of the database, which is every sheet, every record, every entry. So there's nothing that we need to worry about. Did I back up the right database? It's all the same database. So, and I'm sorry if I'm just trying to get to understand the sure. concept. Um, so you have this membership scenario where there's a database and there's a lot of different clients. Mm -hmm. um, I guess what I'm also trying to understand is if that after that plugin you're using, somehow, I don't know, they don't want they just don't want to be a part of I don't know, it's like something can anything happen where they just shut it down and then you just don't have your information anymore? Like what's so worried about? Like no, to my to <laughs> my knowledge, no, because there's examples of that happening uh, where someone deletes the main something and everyone loses it. But right, like I'm afraid, like that God forbid, you use a plugin and you have this data, and then all of a sudden you're you know without this plugin anymore, and now how are you going to operate? You might have once, data, but you know what I'm saying? Once you download the plugin to your site, it's on your site. They can't take it away from you. If okay. you delete the plugin, then you're then it's gone. Gotcha. But they can't take back the plugin. Could you always go into the plugin and 
get that, extrapolate that information, like for instance, this client list, like is there like a kind of Excel spreadsheet with that kind of, sorry, I'm asking, yeah. I'm just trying to make sense of it in my head. It, that kind of answer is going to depend on the plugin. Okay. If the plugin allows a way to export the data, then you can export your data. Uh, there's other ways that are very complicated to extract the data raw from the database, right. but uh, you don't want to go that way. Yeah. So if the plugin gives you the the plugin author gives you the ability to export, you can export. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Could you like for instance, um, sometimes those things would happen, and they if they could you like make a little separate um, bank of plugins. So just in case something like that, um, your personal stuff that you kind of, like kind of. The funny thing uh, uh, is that uh, WordPress kind of shields us from a lot of things, and what you're asking for is kind of technical, which you can do, but WordPress shields you from that. There's no easy way for me to say, okay, I want to download Jetpack onto my flash drive. I can't do that in WordPress. But you can do that, for example, in GoDaddy or Bluehost, and that's a little bit too far out that I want to talk about right now. But you can make backups of your plugins by logging into your cPanel and GoDaddy and copying the files. And that's as much as I'll say about that because it's kind of technical. But yeah, you can make a little bank, a little database of your own plugins and keep them separate just in case they disappear from the internet. Well, that's a little technical how to do it. Yes. Um, from what I understand of your use case scenario, I think you'll be fine with what you're trying to do, although honestly you don't see access databases out in the real world as much as they used to be. They've been supplanted by Oracle databases, MySQL databases, and even some of the newer ones like MongoDB, PouchDB, and such. So honestly, I don't see access, a lot of demand for access databases like before. But for your use case, what you needed to do, it sounds fine what you need to do. If you have experience in access, that's what you want to use, because then you'd have to learn a brand new thing, MySQL or Oracle or whatever. Yeah, I do know The main thing is that, uh, to my knowledge, access, rather than calling it old, we'll call it classic, uh, has um, always worked on on, uh, on someone's computer, right? So you need it you, you you need it to be on a server for someone to access that data. So if you've got an access database on your own personal computer, it might be tricky to set it up for other people to access it. So that's why we have these newer databases like. MySQL that run on a server where it's easier to connect to and download the data and use it. Like applications. Applications, yeah. Submit applications. Data from the applications. But again, we can talk a little bit more on one on one during the breaks to kind of figure out your use case scenario. Yes? When the backup is going to back up on our computer or is going to back up on the blockchain? It's going to back up on the server on the WordPress server. Remember, one of the last steps we do when we do the backup is we click download the installer file and download the zip file. Once you click to download those, then you have it on your flash drive, on your computer. But the default is it stays on the on the server first. I mean, anytime we, we go back, we can have the old one? You, you could, yeah. So when we change it, how they make a difference between the new version and the backup? Remember that every time uh, we start with the folder, uh, with the date, it has the, it has the date on it. So every time I'm giving you a copy of the site, the way it knows is each one has a date. So this zip file with this huge date and this unique key here, this is how it knows which is which. It automatically puts the date and some sort of signature there, and it knows the difference. It's 
In our case, because we're using localhost, it is our system. But when it's in the real world, on GoDaddy, Bluehost, etc., it's going to back up on the Bluehost server online. But when we pay for a website, there is one space. You cannot make a lot of backups. That's true. Uh, that's why when you buy one of these accounts, you have to check how much space they give you because you will have a limit to how many backups you make because you have to share that space. The more the better, the more the safe, yeah. The more safer, but it takes more space. What's that? No, nope, it works on all. Uh, it's agnostic. It works on all, on all uh, systems. SQL works everywhere. So in our case, we we've had this uh, this update nagging us here. So we don't have a WordPress update to do. We don't have any themes to do. We have a plugin to update, a plugin we're not really even using at the moment. This is telling us we have version 3.3 .3 of Akismet, and there's a version 3.3.2. You can view the details, which are really technical usually, but 3.3.2 says it fixed a bug causing JavaScript error in some browsers. There was a 3.1 before that, and when we started the class, we had 3.3. Uh, so we only have one plugin really to update, but if we had our important plugins and less important plugins, I would update the important one, such as the shopping cart. And it's it, for a lot of people, it's it's going to be gibberish what the developer is telling us here, but it's good to look at what's changing because it might say dropping support for PayPal will no longer support Visa right and I need to take all the credit cards so that could be one reason why I may not want to update you have to weigh that updates often give you new features but sometimes they take away other features you've probably seen that on your phone why did it change my app I don't like it and you can't take it back and so you have to weigh it. Are you going to gain enough by updating? And the gains are that you get security and more features. And the negatives could be you lose functionality. So reading that change log is valuable, although a lot of times it's very technical. Like what is a what is a what is an ad comment nonce? I don't know what that is. Sounds like nonsense. <laughs> so, but. You can, you can look at uh, people's comments also. People are commenting, and someone might say, don't do the update, it's going to break everything. Usually they're pretty good at releasing updates that don't break your site. And this again claims 100% compatibility with our version. So with all of that talk, we should do this update. We're not using the plugin at the moment, but we want a secure site. So the way we do the update, pretty easy. You select the updates one at a time or in bulk and then click update the plugin. Let's go ahead and do that. So select it and click update plugin. If someone were try to go to our site at the moment, they would see a screen saying this site is in maintenance mode. And it's going to stay that way until the updates finish. So doing updates might be a good idea off peak hours. So advice updates when you're not expecting a lot of traffic to your site. I don't know what your off-peak time is. I don't know, it's your site. But, uh, you know, after after 5 o'clock, after 9 o'clock is safe, 10 o'clock, do them before you go to sleep. But if everything crashes, you're going to lose some sleep. Doing the, the restore and such. So again, if, if you're doing this in the middle of the day when you're expecting to get sales and something crashes, you have to restore. You're going to lose all that time and effort and sales that may be happening during that time of the day. So you can fix mistakes.
So in our case, uh, it happened pretty fast. I can read details if I want, but that's it. I'll click to return to the updates page. The member goes away. I have zero updates to deal with. Usually during the course of the semester, uh, there's, a, there's updates here and there as we start to add more plugins. That's the big idea regarding, regarding updates. So that would be our steps in the real world. If we get hired by a client, we would make backups and test and do updates. And it's always worked for us, except one time that someone had a really old uh, version of WordPress 2.5, I believe. That's pretty old. And duplicator plugin would not even work with that old version to make a backup. So I had to get an older version of duplicator plugin that would work. But then trying to run that older version still didn't make a backup because the server was also old. It was just a big mess. We were just not able to make backups, and the client didn't want to pay for more, for more bandwidth and such on their site. They, they just wanted to make an update to the site and move on, and they didn't really want to invest more. So we did it without a safety net. This was a safety net. We did it. Let's do the updates. If it totally crashes, we told you, but you agreed to it. And it worked without the safety net, but again, I don't recommend it because a lot could go wrong. This is a lot of steps, but it's your safety net, several safety nets. Okay, we'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. Let's install the e-commerce plugin. I've got a new handout for you that I'll give you that you can print out, but let's install the plugin first. Let's go over to the plugins and add new. And as I said, we'll first start with the, with the WP Commerce plugin. So go to add a new plugin, and we will search. Well, uh, one thing I just remembered. You also have a way to upload a plugin because sometimes you can get a plugin that is not in the main marketplace. Um, I'll get back to that later, but the main marketplace is where you want to be unless you know what you're doing. You could buy a plugin on some other site. You have you could then upload it. We're going to stay within the marketplace. So search WP space e-commerce. I think we found it simply by just searching e-commerce also. But even searching WP e-commerce gives us over a thousand results. But the one we want should be this one. It's got a little uh, pink shopping cart, and it's by the company WP Commerce, updated three months ago. It's compatible with our version, 40,000 installs, we have stars, lots of reviews. We're going to look at WooCommerce also, as I said previously, but first we're going to look at this one, see how it works, and we'll look at WooCommerce also. Um, one thing that I would say about these star ratings is people say, well, really, why, why do we even bother with one that is so low compared to WooCommerce? The thing about rating, ratings in all of this is that I find, and you might even see yourself, that um, it's so easy to give a negative rating than a positive rating. I go to a restaurant, I have a bad experience, I'm on Yelp telling everyone about it. I have a good experience, and I say, I'll, I'll give them a good review when I remember, and I never remember. So the same thing here. This plugin doesn't do everything that WooCommerce does. So I'm sure that people download it, try to use it, it doesn't do what they want, and right away they go to give it one star. But the lots of other people that the, that the plugin works just fine for them, they never take the time to give four or five stars. It's just something to think about. This plugin may do what you need it to do, so it works. It may not do what you need it, so choose another another plugin. So here, click to install. Remember to click activate once you have um, installed it. I 
this plugin installs itself to several places in WordPress. So that's why I've got a new handout for you. If you go back to the network folder, I'm going to add a new, I've added a new, a new handout, number five. We're going to take a break at this point. If you'd like to print it, I'll turn the printer back on. It's off at the moment. We want to make sure you install the, the WP Commerce plugin. You can print that out if you want. We'll be back in 10 minutes, 725.